In this video, I'm going to talk about Shotwell Photo Manager. Shotwell Photo Manager is the default photo organizer in Ubuntu Mate. To access Shotwell, you go to the Applications menu. Since we're dealing with graphics or images, we're going to go to Graphics Submenu, and then we're going to scroll all the way down to where we see Shotwell. Okay, in just a moment, then the Shotwell pops up on your screen. If it's the first time you're ever using it, you'll see a little dialog box that I put on my web page because I've used it before. The first time you ever use it, there'll be a little pop-up screen. It says, Welcome to Shotwell. It allows you to import your photos from your picture folder, or you can say, Don't show this message again, and you can uncheck that so that you can select the folders of your choice instead of importing them straight from your pictures folders. I know when I do screenshots and a lot of things that I download off the internet, I really don't want them organized in my Shotwell program. They're just things I use, download them temporarily, and eventually I will clean them out. So I want to actually import them myself and organize uh, my photos in a way to where it's organized by topic instead of just having a hodgepodge of a lot of different images in one a particular program. All right, the way that you can import your videos, and I or not videos, you can import videos, but the way that you import your images, let me go to my picture folders, and I've created two folders that I'm going to import. One is a car show that I attended uh, back in 2007 with my nephew Chaz, and my other nephew Nathan, and my brother Donnie. Uh, and my nephew took the picture so when he came home and uploaded the pictures into my machine he renamed all the files with his name on them uh, but these are the pictures that we saw or these are the cars that we saw while we were at the car show and I'm going to use these pictures as an example of demonstrating Shotwell the other one is when I went to the discovery place with uh, my students when I taught sixth grade now I tried to go through and sort out all the the pictures of the students so that you're not seeing any from the front view and the picture quality is not that great. A student took them with a camera that they took with them. We allowed them to take their cameras so they could take pictures. And when he got to school, he uploaded them to my computer and I put them on my thumb drive. So I thought that's another example that I could use for the shot well to demonstrate how to import the pictures. So I'm not going to import everything in my pictures folder because I do have screenshots, as you can see, uh, from what's going on on the Big Brother from the Joker's updates. I've got a lot of other things and some of these have a, a lot of pictures in them so this one's going to be the one I want to import and this one here's going to be the one I import let me show you the first way to import pictures in Shotwell the first way to import pictures in Shotwell is to go to the file menu and notice it says import from a folder dot 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 I can click on this and it's going to bring up almost like my file manager allowing me to find the folder on my computer that I import the pictures into Shotwell. I'm going to go into my picture folder. Now, I'm not going to highlight just the picture. It still will import everything in this folder. I then want to say import the pictures from the car show. So I select that. Notice it said import the folder. So I'm not going to open or double click that folder or I would get inside of it to see the pictures. So now I hit OK. Now when I do that, you can see that it's going across very quickly. It's uploading the pictures that I have in that folder, and you see a progress bar growing across the bottom, and it's almost completed. It uploads it very quickly. Now the speed of it also has to, to do with the, the, the graphic size. If these were very large pictures, and they're like 1.4 to 1.8 megabytes per picture, so they're not very low quality, but they're remember this was back in 2007, so they're not the greatest quality. Uh, as you can see here, if I click on an image, you can see in the little corner there is some information about it. It's a resolution of 280 or 2800 by 2128. It's not a very small file. It's a big file. So there's other ways of showing information as well. You can right click on it uh, and look at some additional information about that image and you can go through it and look at the properties. But for right now, we've imported the picture from my car show of 2007. Now I like the way that Shotwell organizes the photos that it imported from the folder. If you look, there's two ways that you can see the, the, those pictures. To start with, it chooses the last import, and this is the folder I last imported, which was the only one because I cleared it out. But I can go to where it says folders, 
and I'm the owner of the computer and it's in the picture folder and here's the car show. Now notice it didn't import everything in picture. It still shows up here because that is a folder that's in the picture uh, folder. If I added more folders to it, I could click on the individual folders and see the pictures just in that particular folder. Now if I wanted to see the individual pictures, I could double click the first image and then it brings it up to where I could use it just like a normal image viewer. I can go to the next picture, the next picture, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go all the way through them because there's 388 photographs, but you can see that we can go through them. Let's say, for example, I'm going to go back to that one. If I want to get a closer view of that engine, I could take, if you've got a mouse, you could scroll on the middle button up and it zooms in. And you can pan around your picture. I can keep zooming in. Also, notice down here at the bottom, I can click this button and it zooms in. Click this button and it zooms. That takes the maximum zoom. Well, hit the wrong button. This takes the maximum zoom. This takes your minimum zoom. This allows you to drag the bar in between to get an individual zoom, almost like rolling the scroll button in the center of your mouse. So if you're a person that has an older mouse that doesn't have the center button, you could just drag this to get yourself a different zoom. Now at the bottom, it does have some editing features, but with Shotwell, they're just basic editing features. For example, the first editing feature is to rotate. It just simply does as the name implies, it rotates. The next one allows me to crop it. If I didn't want those people in my picture, I could choose to crop, and then I could resize my box around it, and then I could choose crop, and it's now cropped off. I still have that one. If I were to crop that guy off, it would take the fender off. But now let's say I don't want to crop it. I undo my crop, and I'm back to my original picture. If it's tilted, I could straighten the photo, but this one's straight. I could straighten it and pull the angles to straighten out the picture. Now, if this was an individual, and the individual had the red eye, and you've probably seen a lot of photographs where you take a picture, and a person has red eyes in the center of their eyes, you could select around, click onto the red eye, select around it, and hit OK, and it would remove the red eye. There's other adjustments that you can make. Exposure. Now notice the picture. Let's see if I can drag this box over where you can see the picture as I make the changes. So you can change the exposure. You know, you can make it darker. You can make it brighter. It's almost like adding more sunlight to it. Remember, this is about in the center. The saturation. It takes a little bit slower to take effect but the saturation is changing. It's harder to see. You can tell more when you go to the left of the center. If you look at the orange in that car, notice the saturation as I move it up, how bright orange it gets. And when I go to the left, how dull it gets, almost like gray. The tint, you can change the tint to where it changes the colors of it. You can adjust out to where you get the colors that you like. The temperature. Now with temperature, you know there's hot colors and there's cold colors. One way makes it redder, which are hotter colors. The other way makes it more bluer, the cooler colors. So that's what's adjusting your temperature. The shadows. Remember a light source is what's needed to make a shadow. So you can increase the light source to take away some of the shadow in the picture by increasing the light source and going back to original place. You can do the highlights. So you can change the picture around. I'm going to hit reset to put it back to its original state. Then I'm going to uh, cancel out of it. Now I'm back to my original picture. So those are the enhancements. Very basic editing features. That is the forward and backwards buttons to progress through the images. And that's your zoom feature. All right, that was how to import it by going through the menu. Another way to import your photos, and we're going to import the discovery place, is I'm going to split this screen in half, half. I'm going to also split this screen in half. And you can drag and drop a folder into where it says Photos. I've got the Discovery Place already highlighted. I'm going to drag it and drop it up here in my library. And it's important, the pictures. There's not as many pictures as there were in the car show. So there's 43 photos that were in that particular folder. I took a lot out because I didn't want the students' front, their faces exposed. From the side, you can't tell who that student is. So if I wanted to, to choose a picture, let's say I'm going to see the last several, starting at the Stingray. If I click on the Stingray, I can go forward. And you see some of the pictures, like a tarantula there. You can see squids and octopus, the things that we saw when we, were, when we took our students to the discovery place. 
So this is how you import pictures. Now, notice I showed you the folders when I imported the car show. Another way that you can organize your pictures is by events, by a time period. Notice the first set of pictures uh, we went to the car show in 2007 and if there were like in every month I imported something in 2007 it would organize them by the different times. I would have an icon to represent everything that was in that folder and it randomly chooses a picture to represent that folder. So this happened in July, it happened on a Sunday so that's the only thing that I have in 2007. So if you are looking for something and you know about the time, you can look in the folders by timeline instead of by name, and it helps you find the picture. So this was November of 2011 when we took our kids to the Discovery Place, and so it was easy to find those because it was by a timeline. Now you don't have to expose both, or you could, but here's my Discovery Place because I've got them organized in I had them in uh, my name, which was the name of the folder, home folder, under pictures, and these are the two folders that I imported. I didn't import every single folder. So that way I've got just the pictures that I want if I had company or something and one wanted to show them some pictures, I could bring up my shot well, I could locate the picture through the thumbnail, and I could double click on that picture and show that uh, person while they're here. All right, let's say for example that you've moved some pictures around and you wanted to take them out of these folders and events. Uh, the way that you remove those is you go back up, let's, let's choose last import, and you go up to edit and say select all the pictures that we last imported, then I go back to it and I say remove from library. Now when I choose remove from library, please pay attention to the options that are on your screen. Notice I can cancel out of it if I chose the wrong option. If I said remove and trash the files, notice it says this will remove 43 photos from your shop well library. Would you like to remove the files to your desktop trash? If you hit move and trash, it's going to not only take them out of your library, it's going to throw away your pictures into the trash bin. More than likely, you're just wanting to remove them from your library. So if you're planning on taking those pictures, putting them on a thumb drive or burning them to a CD or moving them to another folder, you just say remove them from the library and it took the discovery place is no longer on both the events nor is it in the folders uh, category. Now if I wanted to do that again by saying select all the pictures in this one I go back and say remove them from the library again I don't want to remove them and trash them I don't want to lose the pictures of all the automobiles that we took so I can say remove from the library and it removed all 388 I am now back to my original when I didn't have anything organized so if you're someone with a digital camera you can take out your little SD card put it inside of your computer and when you do that most of the time Ubuntu Mate is set up to where the time you put your flash drive or your SD card in your machine Shotwell normally comes up and starts or asks you just like you see here uh, do you want to import the pictures and if you choose yes if you've got several folders on your SD card you can choose the folders that you want to import and it will import it now a lot of times a uh, camera won't name the the pictures it might put like IMG with some numbers or something afterwards once you have the pictures in here you can actually tag them I've already removed them but you can modify tags you can add tags so that you can organize your files by your tags so that when you go to search for something you can search for that tag name and you can find it a lot quicker so that is one way that you can put pictures into Shotwell by the SD card by importing it. I already showed you by using your disk. Another way is if you had a cord to your camera you could plug it into it and you can import them the, just like taking the SD card out and putting it into your computer. Now from time to time people with Apple phones or iPhones they have trouble with Shotwell because you normally use uh, I, your iTunes to upload things so more than likely if you've got an iPhone you probably need to use iTunes or another system put them on a thumb drive and then bring them to the, your Linux machine your Ubuntu machine and upload them in Shotwell this is just the basic features of Shotwell there's more to it than this the, the purpose of this video is for people that are coming to Ubuntu Mate for the first time and looking at the content which is on my web page to help them understand the default software and to how to use Ubuntu Mate. So if you'd like to learn more about Shotwell, uh, you can actually hit going back into Shotwell 
if you want to know more about it, and this applies to anyone, not just someone above uh, the newbies, you can go to content and you can do this with about any software package with Linux. And you can take yourself like running shot well, supporting photos and video. It has a topic like important from S spot, F spot. You click onto it, it tells you step by step how to do this. So you go to the next topic. So it has a little help and contents menu that steps you step by step through it. So hopefully this gives you a little basic rundown. And if for some reason uh, you forgot something, instead of going back and rewatching the video, you can go to my website, go to highlight or hover over Ubuntu Mate, click on Shotwell Photo Manager. It will take you to this website, and it will kind of guide you through the stuff that I showed you in the video. And I actually took some contents uh, from the content section, and I copied and pasted it and stuck it into, or actually took screenshots and paste it to my website so that you can look at that without actually uh, bringing up the software and looking at the content there. So if for some reason you wanted to print this out, you could screen capture and print out the section or copy and paste it and put it in your word processor and print out contents that you need. So this is how you access the information from my website. I hope you enjoyed something and have a great day.